We are investigating how plants function. In a separate video, we explored what happens to the mass of plants during growth. But here, we are principally interested in how plants use light as they live and grow. You probably know already that if you deprive a plant of light, it will die. But this is not the case with animals. In fact, there are some species of animals, such as deep ocean creatures or cave dwellers, that never see the light of day, but they do just fine. So why are plants different? Before we go any further, let's consider the goal of this video. After watching this video, you should be able to explain and model how light influences how plants function. To explore the question of what plants are doing with light, let's use the tools that we have available to us. We have a scale to record mass, and we have BTB to record the movement of carbon dioxide. Since we explored mass changes in the other video, Let's now use the BTB. Recall how bromothymol blue works. If carbon dioxide gas is added to the solution, the BTB turns more yellow. If carbon dioxide is lost from the solution, the BTB turns more green or even blue. Let's explore the role of light in the movement of carbon dioxide in plants. First, let's grow some plants. There we go. Now let's set up our experiment. We're trying to figure out what role light plays in the function of plants. Specifically, we want to see if light has any effect on the way that plants move carbon dioxide around. To accomplish this, let's take two identical groups of plants. Next to each one, we'll place some BTB. Since we don't really know how or even if the plants will influence the BTB, let's play it safe and put both yellow and greenish solutions next to each plant group. The BTB is acting as our responding variable. Now let's think about our manipulated variable. We want to figure out what light does to the function of plants. So let's cover up one group of plants with a dark cloth, which will keep them in the dark. The other we will leave exposed to bright light. This way, the only thing that differs between the groups is the presence of light. With luck, we will be able to see how the manipulated variable, the presence of light, influences the responding variable, the movement of CO2 in the plants. Let's go away for about 24 hours and then come back to check on our plants. So let's look at our results. The plants that were exposed to light turned the yellow BTB more greenish. The plants in the dark seem to have done the opposite and turned the greenish BTB yellow. At this point, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out what these results mean. It looks like in both cases, carbon dioxide has moved around. Let's do some modeling so we can illustrate and understand our observations. of our experimental setup. On one side, the plants received lots of light, while on the other they received no light. The BTB in the light changed from yellow to greenish. That indicates that CO2 came out of the BTB. But where did it go? Well, the only thing in the container besides BTB was the plants, so it looks like the plants in the light were absorbing CO2. The BTB in the dark changed from greenish to yellow, this indicates that CO2 entered the BTB. Following the same logic, this suggests that the plants in the dark were producing CO2, which turned the BTB yellow. So what does this really mean about plants? Mm. It looks like the principal role of light in a plant's functioning is that it influences the direction that the plant moves CO2. In the daytime, when sunlight is shining on the plant, the plant is absorbing <laughs> CO2 gas from the atmosphere. But at night, when there's no sunlight, the plant is emitting CO2. 
So to summarize, it seems that light influences a plant's ability to move CO2 around. With light energy, CO2 is absorbed, but without this energy, CO2 comes out of the plant. Hmm. Let's review the goal of this video to make sure that you met it. After watching this video, you should be able to explain and model how light influences how plants function. If you can't do that, go back and watch the parts of the video you don't understand. But remember that science is not just about answers, it is also about questions. At this point, you may still have some questions about plants, light, and CO2. Take a moment to pause the video and come up with a question that you still have. Here are some questions that we came up with. Why does light seem to determine the direction in which CO2 is moving? How does the daytime rate of CO2 movement compare to the nighttime rate? What connection is there between the movement of CO2 and the mass changes we observed in the other video? We'll address some of these questions in the final video on plants. Until next time, remember, you can learn anything.